today is uh, is really just about traffic safety. And I think I think um, what's important to remind remind everybody right now is that obviously it's it's starting to rain again and it's getting dark sooner uh and really to be careful uh you know leave extra space for the cars in front of you and be careful of pedestrians we've we've had a couple uh pretty nasty uh crashes involving pedestrians in the last few weeks uh and so just a friendly reminder to 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 be on the lookout for folks walking along the side of the road uh, or crossing the road and wearing dark clothes um and then it's again that it's that time of year for packages to be delivered uh, we start to see a big influx in package thefts around this time of year. So if you don't already take extra measures to uh, protect yourself from being package uh, theft victims, and that could be everything from uh, having, you know, somebody sign for your package or require a, a signature for your package to get just getting a PO box. Um, and I'm happy to, uh, I have some information that I can send out to you all if you provide your email addresses to me just just friendly tips and reminders and that's really all i have i'm happy to answer some questions though hey any questions for matt uh today this you guys still there can you hear me yeah we can hear you you dropped out a couple of times okay. but we can hear you okay are there any other questions uh, any uptick in violence uh, uh that has spilled over from portland you know what? No, we are, we're, we're very blessed in our community. Um, we haven't noticed anything uh, significant in our community as far as uh, a boil over from Portland. No. Okay. Well, again, Matt, thank you very much. Stay safe. We very much appreciate you coming and joining with us uh, today. And please stay on if you have, if you want to, but um, feel free. Thank you so much. You're, you're very welcome. And my email address should be attached, attached to my handle. It's mhenderson at beavertonoregon.gov. So if any of you need uh, to reach out, feel free to do so. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks. Okay. Um, next, Twilleton Hills and Parks. John, thank you very much for joining us. If you'd like to, to go ahead. Yeah. I've got a couple of things going on right now. Um, just letting everyone know that uh, we've had facilities reopen. Um, we've had Conestoga Athletic Center and Tennis Center open last month. Um, Cedar Hills Recreation Center has opened their weight and fitness rooms. And the Aquatic Center and the Conestoga Pool, we've opened up our swimming pool um, right now for lap swim and aqua fitness. Oh. Um, we still have free fitness in the park this month. Um, no pre-registration is required um, and they are at a, ver a variety of our parks and um, our schedules online. Um, our out of school program is still going. Um, it's at Cedar Hills and Conestoga. Kids are in a stable pot of 10 um, at their grade level. Um, we still have some spots available but um, getting a little full. Um, preschool programs are available. Um, we've opened those up at Cedar Hills the Nature Center and Conestoga. Um, spaces are still available at a couple of those sites. Um, we have a Halloween event coming up. Um, it is a drive-through Halloween trick-or-treat event at the HMT complex on Saturday the 24th at 6 p.m. Um, we are having a drive-in bingo at the Stir Center uh, parking lot this month and welcoming and welcoming walks with community partners to show our support for immigrants and refugees. Um, you can check those out on our calendar online. Uh, we have a couple volunteer opportunities coming up, um, community garden cleanup and spreading bark chips in some dog, uh, dog runs. Uh, virtual health and wellness resource fair. Uh, we'll be hosting an online fair this month and have a lot of um, resources and information on that um, on our website. Um, vision action plan was adopted. Um, the, our board has adopted our vision action plan in September. Um, it was led by a volunteer task force and it connected thousands of community members to develop a plan that outlines what the community wants and their priorities and um, how we can operate more efficiently with that. 
um, trail usage remains uh, high still. Um, we're seeing a larger number of visitors on our trails, which is great. Um, if you're looking for a quieter time on the trail, try visiting before 10 a.m. After that, it starts picking up. Uh, and trail users are required to maintain physical distancing or wear face covering. Um, Fano Creek trail closures, the, uh, we're working with Clean Water Services on a stream enhancement and bridge replacement at the Fano Creek Greenway um, section. Uh, we're working currently on the uh, bridge installation and hope to connect the new streams course soon. Um, the, due to the smoke delays, we're expecting the project um, and to reopen the trail towards the end of October. And we just repaired the slide at Conestoga Pool, um, re resurfaced the top layer, um, so we are getting some um, renewed life out of that. And outdoor restrooms um, are being opened up at HMT Cedar Hills Park. Walton Hills Nature Center, Jenkins Estate, Cooper Mountain Nature Park, and Mountain View Champions Park. And that is it. Well, that's a lot going on. Thank you very much. <laughs> it was a good update. Uh, any questions, please, for John? John, a, a quick question. This is Dave Stewart. Um, did I hear you say right that you're like fixing the bridge at Fano Creek Park? Is that? Yeah. That's yeah. the place where it sort of floods uh, a lot down there in the winter? Yeah, I believe that's where it's uh, being um, done at. It's on the, the, the Greenway corner. I don't know if it's the one in the park or on the, the north side of Hall, that little section. That I for you. It's, it's in between Danny and Hall. Yeah, that section. It's, it's not the Shoals Ferry bridge no oh okay no but i a lot of times the park is not very usable you know through most of the winter because it sort of gets flooded i know that sort of that part of the park is has I, if it's the one that i'm thinking of uh maybe not because what i'm thinking of is between shoals and hall so between hall and denny okay i i'm i'm reconnoitered now thanks okay does does uh the park district have anything to do with the sidewalk slash trail along Denny Road across the street from Bose Elementary School. God, oh, how do I do this? I don't believe we have the control on the sidewalk, but the trail. Right, the, the trail where it's south of Denny Road. But um, I'm just, I don't know who to ask about. So they cut down trees and redid that whole path there on the north side of the street. Yeah. And they still uh, haven't finished the concrete work. Yeah, that so would be the city. That would be the city, Debbie. Okay. It's, yeah. it's like city and some utility or something. Right. Uh, it looks like they're still uh, working with the telephone poles and power, uh, power poles and everything to the apartment complex and stuff. But, right. Yeah. I, but I, it, there's like four or five sections of sidewalk that are still yeah. not completed. Yeah. Just, so. Anyway, I didn't know whether that was a joint park district no but i thank you i can i can uh ask for you but i believe that's city okay thank Actually, you miles could probably check too it's it, i'm sure it's the city yeah i i do have a question john um aren't we getting close to the previous bond uh measure from expiring and i think is this is the rec district going to is looking at a new one coming out um I don't know if they're looking for a new one yet, but we pretty much have wrapped up um, most of the bond project um, with the last one being um, some of the park repairs. And when it does, will we'll, uh, the NACs be able to have some input for projects like uh, the, uh, the Cobb property, et cetera? So, you know, that could be, we could have input to maybe include that in as part of the bond money that would be voted on in the next go around. And ha have you guys vote on some of the projects? Well, make sure that our wishes are included in that. Yeah, I, I can pass that along. I'll, I'll, 
the chain. I know uh, Mike and uh, Heidi would be very interested in that. Yep. Okay, is there any other questions for John? If not, yes, Diane. I just had a quick question. So the different uh, green space paths between the neighborhoods and that, is that maintained by the city of Beaverton or THPRD? Uh, it should be on the path, the, the green space is on the path. No, the path like, uh, so in my neighborhood directly behind my house, there's one of the paved um, paths with the green space on the other side and then other houses. I was just curious as to who actually maintains that. Uh, it should be, it should be THPRD, but there's some quirky property lines. Well, I just wanted to say thank you. Um, uh, about a week and a half ago, one of the trees in the green space broke, fell. Um, weather was a little dicey. My husband called, he got straight through and he called the city because we weren't sure who to call. And there was a crew out within a couple of days taking down the tree that had kind of fallen over and was leaning against one of our trees and went over the green space um, path. So thank you sure. to whomever. Okay, I'll pass that along. Okay, well, in, in that comment too, I'd like to also pass a thank you. We had power, when we had the big power outage here, uh, maybe two or three weeks ago, uh, one of the THPRD trees hit my transformer that's in our garden and took us out for three days. So, uh, but we called the uh, park and rec and they came out, they checked it and they gave permission for PGE to actually take the tree down. So it doesn't take it out anymore. So I really appreciate that too. Again, same sort of thing, very responsive. They were very quick. The, the park manager for Cobb Park came out and uh, they've now marked the tree ready to take it down so we don't lose power again. So they appreciate and give good feedback to them for being so responsive to our needs. I appreciate that. Will do. I Thank you. Had another, I had another question about um, graffiti on like park benches and that sort of thing. Um, is that a is that a call the city or is that a call the park district? Uh, you can call us. You can call us at Park Patrol, and they usually okay. get out there. And depending on what it is, they sometimes want pictures to um, track it, and then okay. uh, then we clean it up pretty quick. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Sean. A good update, and thank you everyone else for being part of it. So now we're on to the city. Uh, Miles, would you like to give us your update? Yeah. Um, let's see. Today was the first review of applications for the interim city manager. Um, we're hiring an interim city manager to support the new city charter implementation and then to help us with recruiting a regular city manager. So on January 1st, 2021, the city will transition from a mayor council to a council manager form of government as a result of the voter approved charter changes from the May 2020 election. The interim city manager will be appointed um, by the city council this fall and will report directly to the council, provide administrative direction to staff and support city initiatives and leadership to all city departments. It'll be the city's first city manager will serve in the role for probably probably six months um, until they hire a full-time regular city manager. So kind of a transition. Um, and the interim city manager is expected to start on January 1st. And then last night was the virtual fall voters forum. Um, we had the mayor's race, city council race, and Washington County uh, Commissioner's race. Um, the, the replay of that will be on our website probably by the end of the week. Um, we're just waiting for the TVC TV to finish putting it together. Um, so we'll be able to view it, view it on the website. There's also <laughs> replays on cable channels uh, 28 and 30, one's in Spanish and one's in English. Um, and they're working on the closed captioning as well. So I heard it, it went well. Um, I haven't had a chance to see it yet, but uh, our office puts that on and our other team members worked really hard on that one. And that's all the updates I have. 
Okay, are there any questions for Miles for the city? Uh, Debbie, do you have your hand up? No, that was from before. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you very much, Miles. Um, next on the agenda is Gary. Uh, Gary, and I take it between Gary and Frosty, you'll be able to give us an update on BCCI. Uh, yeah, I hope so. Um, last meeting, uh, there was an update on the um, <clears throat> on the um, uh, infill project, the, uh, the requirement that all zones, all residential zones have provisions for multifamily housing. Uh, Rob Zeller gave an update on that. Uh, basically, the state is taking the lead on developing some ordinances, some model ordinance that can be used and some other choices that are available to cities. Uh, that is in progress. The state is working on basically four different tracks. One track is a minimum lot size, which we pretty much all have now. Uh, the second is this model code, and that is developed uh, for cities that don't have developed their own code or adopted a code. They can use the state model. I don't believe that's the way that, I didn't read that the city is headed for the model code. They've, they've got a program in process. There's another, another, um, Another method available that's being discussed, these are in public hearings now by the state, and that is performance metrics. Um, that's uh, meeting a percentage threshold, I guess, is, would be the short, the short summary there. And the final track that uh, is being considered for availability is to develop a master plan where you develop a minimum density over a, over a set area, and that's similar to a planned unit development. There's a lot of communities that have master plans at this point. Um, that, that process is, is expected to um, run through mid-November uh, or up to about Christmas. And uh, cities must have a developed plan by July of 2022, uh, or they have to ad adopt that, uh, that development code. Um, so this project, process is basically being led by the state right now. At some point, the city will pick that back. Uh, they've, they've been uh, major participants in this entire process. Um, having said that, the only other thing I want to add is that uh, there, I haven't received any development notices within the um, South Beaverton neighborhood. Uh, and that was effective, I think, through yesterday or the day before when I got when I got a list of notices. So, having said that, uh, unless somebody has questions, I'm um, I'm going to hand this off to Frosty, who's uh, I'm sure was busy with with a, a virtual pet walk here this last week. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, that was the uh, the only um, matching grant that uh, we even discussed. Uh, and it's actually been approved and uh, you'd be happy to know that South Beaverton is part of that. I'm not sure we've had to do much of anything, but uh, we've gotten credit uh, as being part of it. I, I did uh, help uh, the, the uh, Greenway uh, NAC kind of navigate that and get them hooked up with Miles. Miles done a fabulous job getting that and it's actually been out in uh, some of the uh, weekly updates that I've, I've forwarded to everybody. Um, we also had a uh, was scheduled for a half an hour. It ended up close to 40, 45 minutes. Uh, Dr. Mark Loveless, who's a, a fellow colleague of mine that I worked with <clears throat> from the pharmacy standpoint back in the late 80s, early 90s with the uh, AIDS epidemic. And he and I have been keeping in touch and working on a number of other projects. I offered him up to do a presentation on COVID that uh, went, went over very well with lots of questions and some good answers. And um, uh, if the city council would be interested in something like this, I'm sure Mark could repeat it. Uh, I've hired him to be our company's uh, medical advisor and he's worked with our company, Cook Security Group, to make sure our employees are safe. And we've done lots and lots of webinars for our customers, which include a lot of financial institutions and other businesses on how to stay open um, and not uh, suffer financially or job loss wise 
and still be safe and secure. Uh, and that's the rest of it. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Frosty and Gary. Any questions for the BCCI? Our next, uh, our next BCCI meeting is the 26th. Okay, so I have one for Miles related to the BCCI. So all the grant money that hasn't got spent this year because everything got canceled, is that gonna be carried over to next year? Uh, no, our budget doesn't work like that. Um, oh. We are spending some of it. Um, we're having a matching grant subcommittee meeting next Tuesday. And we have three proposals to go over, um, but there'll definitely be some money left over. It's returned to the general fund. Okay. And um, that's just the, the city system of doing it. They don't do carry, carry over year to year. And okay. I would, Miles, uh, as being part of that uh, BCCI uh, subcommittee on grants, I am sure that, uh, well, you, never, you gotta be careful when you say you're sure. Um, I doubt if the budget would be decreased that much uh, because there's a lot of extenuations and mitigations from this year. So uh, at least I'm hoping it wouldn't be uh, reduced. Uh, hopefully we'll be out of this uh, soon because there's a lot of good therapies coming out and uh, um, We'll hopefully we'll be back uh, next summer doing what we want to do. Okay. Again, thank you very much, BCCI. Uh, if there's no more questions, we're going to move on um, to Chief uh, Groshaw. Um, we've invited her back because there are many people that said that they had questions that they haven't, uh, weren't able to ask last week. So uh, if I'd like to pass it over to you, if you'd like to say anything else that you thought about since we last spoke, and then we'll open it up to the floor for questions. Um, thank you all again for having me here. And um, I sincerely apologize for last time. I think I'm in a better place type with my Wi-Fi. So um, um, not much to really pass on. Um, I wanna um, you know, be here for you guys to ask any questions except um, and I think I, I said this last time, but we are still getting settled into our new building. Um, it's, it's pretty awesome. We're pretty uh, fortunate um, and wouldn't be a, a possibility without uh, our community and voters. So a big uh, shout out to you guys. Uh, other than that, um, we're just trugging along. Um, uh, there, there hasn't, I know somebody asked Officer Henderson about the violence um, in Portland, and, and it hasn't, he, he's absolutely right, it hasn't spilled over. Um, we haven't even um, experienced really anything. We've had a couple peace, very peaceful protests, uh, or excuse me, march protests, and um, we didn't, we weren't even a part of it, and it just, I think, speaks volumes for our community um, about, about just how close in a community we are and, and, mm -hmm. and respect one another. Um, so with that being said, uh, we have, um, I was going to tell you guys, we have five openings right now um, and um, to, and so we're working on hiring five new, new officers and then we'll be fully staffed. Um, the thing about hiring new officers though is they're not, uh, not any good to us for about uh, two years um, because of the academy and the training and all that and then they ride with another officer, field training officer for a, a while. Uh, to throw a wrench into that is um, the DPSST, the State Police Academy, um, is having some budget issues with COVID, as, as you know, everyone is. And so um, they've cut back on their basic police academy classes. And um, so, uh, you know, you, we, hire, we hire them and then, and then we have to wait to send them to the academy. So that even puts the timeline of them being on the road um, longer out. So nothing uh, earth shattering, but, um, um, you know, struggling like, like every other agency and company, you know, around. So that's all I have. Um, and I'll just open it up to questions. Please um, feel free to ask me anything you want. And um, if I can't, or I don't know the answer, I can certainly get back to, I, I'll find the answer for you guys and, and get it to Miles to get to you guys. Okay, Frosty, I see your hand up. You're muted. I uh, note, uh, Officer Grishong, that I've got some friends who are police officers in Portland that are looking to leave the state. Uh, if, they, if you were to hire uh, a police officer that has already been an, on quote unquote active duty, would it take that long to in, 
uh, incorporate them into the force? No, no. And in fact, we do, we, um, laterals, we do love laterals um, because it doesn't, they don't even have to go to the academy. They, they can come, uh, we hire them, they're sworn in, they ride with an FPO to learn geography and, and the Beaverton way, if you will, and uh, culture and all that. And then they're out on the street um, pretty quickly. We have hired a couple out of state uh, laterals. Um, a couple years ago, we hired one from Maui, um, a couple from California. And when that happens, they come to us and they're sworn in and then they have to go to a two week um, academy through DPSST and get recertified in two weeks. They have to take classes and stuff like that. So even if they're out of state, it's a very a quicker turnaround for them to be out on the road with us. Do they lose that, um, I guess in the military, I'd say rank or tenure? Because, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, if you're uh, one friend, uh, friend's son has been in the Portland Police Southeast area for about 20 years, and uh, I don't think he'd want to come back and be no. a, a rookie. So is that yeah. is that like a, a state benefit that he gets to keep his? No. Um, it's, it's all with the unions and all that. So we can't offer, like if, if somebody from Portland with 20 years wanted to come over and say, we'll bring you in the 20 year mark with everybody who's been here for 20 years and you'll get the same sick time, vacation time that you left Portland with. Um, they, they don't do that. Mm -hmm. No, I wish. Um, um, my last question is, uh, if I, I watched the Vortis forum last night and, um, <clears throat> uh, I won't name names, but. Uh, there was some talk about, um, I won't call it defund the police, but it was it was pushing that uh, almost to the very edge or over. Uh, I would hope that um, obviously there may be better ways to do things and, and they were talking about, about how you were participating in that and I fully support that. But, um, you know, the first ro role of government is to protect citizens and I hope that you would stand up for that and any comments about any reduction in, uh, has there been any reduction in your budget and is it going to impact your ability to do the job that we want you to do? Um, no, so there, you know, of course, um, like you said, we can do things better and there are things we're, we're changing. For example, we we train our officers in mental health, responding to mental health, which is a large part of what officers are doing these days. And we're actually researching, um, and I might have spoke to it last month, um, joining the mental health, uh, Washington County Mental Health Response Team, and it's the Sheriff's Office, and they have clinicians riding with their deputies. And they'll respond to our calls if we ask them, and we are continually asking them. So we are exploring that. And I don't think it's so much defunding this, it's looking for other ways to um, put our resources towards uh, programs such as that. So we would have an officer assigned to that team who would have a clinician. So it's, it's not taking away officers, but it's kind of re reallocating. Um, so yeah, we, we again are very fortunate. Um, I've been here for 25 years. We've always had a supportive community. No one has tried to, we're very mindful uh, of our budget and it's, it's, you know, the community members money. And I think that that's realized at the budget committee. Um, but there has been no talk of, of defunding or, like I said, I have five open positions right now and no one's told me don't hire. Um, so, and again, that speaks volumes for you know, the mayor, the council and, and, and the community. We're very, very fortunate. And you and your force, we appreciate, uh, know that we appreciate you, I hope. Thank you. Yes, we do. We, we you know, I, I ask the guys and gals, I'm like, How, how's it going out there? Because I'm not out every day. And and they're like, you know, every once in a while, people drive by on a traffic stop and make a gesture. But for the most part, um, thumbs up. They're honking at them, thumbs up. Um, we get food all the time brought in, um, you know. So it's been um, really uplifting. Okay. David, David Stewart, I see your hand up. Thank you. Are you able to hear me? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, Chief, uh, hey, welcome to the position, uh, the new position. Uh, you know, uh, really appreciate your service. Thank you. I know it's uh, the force is, is really about uh, serving uh, the community, people who run to disaster as opposed to run away from it. So I appreciate that very much. That said, I would say most of the people on this call, most, I can't say for sure, but a lot of us are white folks. Uh -huh. And I would say uh, we have a perspective which is different 
than what I've heard from a lot of people who are black folks, uh -huh. in particular relationship to the police, right? We may not experience that because we're in the majority. Correct. Right? So I would uh, ask you, could you, what would you say to someone who is black and who would say to you as a police representative, stop killing us, stop killing us. What would you say to that? Because, you know, even though Beaverton doesn't have a lot of that going on. Right. Right. Reality is you are a representative of law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And we have you here, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, later, yeah. So, um, you know, that my, through my work with HRAC, um, that statement hasn't specifically come up, but, but that is the feel and, and, you know, sometimes justified. Um, I hate to say that, um, you know, it, I don't know how to answer it. It's hard because I know how for 25 years, we, um, the Beaverton Police Department conducts business and do we mess up? Yep, we do. Do, have we let people go who should not be police officers? Yes, we have. Um, and, and we haven't had any incidents, horrific incidents, such as the George, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, um, and I'm forever grateful for that. Um, it's hard because we work for years to, to put money away in the, the, the piggy bank of goodwill and good relationships and community trust. And um, one incident, such as the George Floyd, um, takes away, wipes that bank out that we had no control over. I mean, and that's just, it, it is how it is. Um, it, it causes distrust. Um, and so, it, it's hard because I know Beaverton and I know what we do, but we're being, you know, stop killing black people. Well, I don't know what the right answer is to that. I mean, we base our use of force decisions on actions of, of the person that we're interacting with. Um, and it doesn't matter if they're black, white, um, Hispanic, you know, Asian, it doesn't, somebody's, uh, the people that we deal with, we're not going to do anything unless it's a response. We respond to how someone is behaving. So to say just stop killing black people, I, don't, I can really can't qualify that because we don't go out, you know, and look for just to, you know, kill certain a certain race of people. It's it's predicated on what the situation is at the time. Um, you ask really good questions. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, and I, and again, there may not be a correct answer or a right answer. Yeah. I think you will be faced with that. Oh, yeah. You will be, you will be, um, if you will, tagged with that as your, you know, responsibility, whether it's justified or not. Correct. Whether you feel like your force, you and your force may have done, might have done all the right things in terms of training, uh -huh. staffing, uh -huh. discipline. Trust me, I'm a manager. I know what it's like to have challenges in that space. But at the same time, I also understand where someone says, look, this is not working for mm -hmm. a, a segment of folk. And right. having a good answer about that, not mm -hmm. just an effective answer to a white guy asking you the question, but an effective answer to the people of color in the community, I think is mm -hmm. gonna be really important. And if you can point to specific changes that Beaverton police have made mm -hmm. over the past period of time, whether by your leadership or somebody else's or a plan to implement for the future, mm -hmm. understanding you may not have anticipated all these things and said, yeah, we need to put some additional things to increase the confidence level. On yeah. This subject. And, and, you know, we've um, just not, I, I'm not the only one who's been reaching out to um, our communities of, of color. Um, you know, we, we've been, we should have been doing more of that all along. You know, we could have done better at that. We are doing that. Like I'm, working with the Beaverton Black Parents Union. I'm working with an organization called REAP. And it's, it's organizations that, that deal with um, uh, BIPOC students or younger and trying to reach out and say, hey, we're not bad. You know, this is why we do things. And, and this is, you know, and try to educate and develop that relationship. But it's, it's really hard right now. It, it is. And um, thank you. Actually, thank you for that question. I, I kid, you're making me sweat. But um, that's a question I have not been asked or actually thought of. So you can rest assured I'll be thinking on it. Good job, Chief. <laughs> well done. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Uh, Debbie Stewart, you had your hand up next. I did. Um, kind of going back to reallocation of resources, um, I know that the school resource officers uh, was a topic um, earlier oh. this summer in terms of uh, allocation of resources. Since generally school is not in session in Beaverton, um, what are those resource officers doing now since they're not in schools interacting with students? Um, and second, um, the, how, how diverse would you say the police force is in comparison to the diversity of the city of Beaverton and the school district for that matter? Okay. So first of all, the school resource officers. So they are working their normal schedules, which is, is, is day shift. Um, we did not pull them because school's out and put them into the patrol rotation. Um, they are still very actively engaged with the schools, with um, the teachers and the counselors. For example, uh, teachers having Zoom classes might see something in the background that's um, harmful or not a good situation and they need their mandatory reporters. And so we, we still go out and check those things out. Um, and so the, the liaison, the relationship building um, with the, I know BSD has hired a, a whole bunch of um, counselors, extra counselors. And so we're reaching out, trying to strengthen those relationships and this is what we do. Um, also, so every time the uh, DHS receives a phone call on their tip line of, of child abuse, it's called a, D, a D07, not a D07, a DHS 307. And that is, all those are sent to our detectives division. Um, DHS determines, hey, this doesn't seem right. Um, it might need some follow-up. And so um, the good thing is, in all this, is that those are um, now being handled. We get a lot of them, if you can imagine. And they're being handled more quickly because the SROs now are taking those because they're not in the school all the time. And they're taking those and following up on those. So they are still kind of, you know, they're not obviously having the relationships with the students that they had last year, but they are still in their roles. And then um, I guess, uh, so the BSD is having a, a school board meeting on November 16th that I'll be at. And um, I guess more to follow then on what the outcome is on whether they stay in the school or not. And if they don't, um, if the uh, school district decides, nope, we don't want them in, um, we will reabsorb them back into patrol and 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 so we, we won't have to lay them off. Um, the uh, uh, what was your second question again? You're muted, Debbie. The diversity of the force okay. uh, as compared to the diversity of the population of Beaverton. Okay. Um, we do, um, I don't have the numbers in front of me. Um, we can do better. We've come a long way. Um, the, the hard part is recruiting. We, we try so many different things to recruit. Um, and that's one of the things that, um, working with the diversity advisory board and HRAC and these other groups that, that community groups that I am is give us ideas. What can we do? Because we are trying, um, you know, and our, our best word of, um, uh, best recruiting is our own officers. Um, for example, we have a, a, a BIPOC officer who um, uh, played football in college and, and now we're getting ready to hire one of his very good buddies. And so it's, it's you know, building up and, and just trying to, I don't know, you know, at a loss. I would be ecstatic if in these five positions we filled with BIPOC officers. I mean, I, I would be over the moon, but it's very hard. And, and it's even harder now because of these events in the nation that are going on, you know, I have a, a child who's 20 and I don't want him to be a police officer. Um, he's Caucasian. Um, but now if, if, if someone of a different culture wants to be a police officer with everything going on, that's probably a, a red flag, you know, probably a, not something they really want to do. And then the, the heck they would maybe take from their friends and family. Um, I've ha heard horror stories at Portland of um, officers, I mean, it's divided families, um, you know, because they don't like the police, but their own family members are a police officer. And so it's a real tough time. 
Um, but we, we continue. Um, we want to have a better, more diverse uh, police force. And that's our, that's the number one goal. It's just, um, we got to find a better way to, to recruit. So if you guys have any ideas, I am wide open. I was tempted to quit, ret retire from my job, maybe if you're a rookie position, but maybe I might be too old to be a rookie. What do you think? You're Frosty? never too Am old. I... You're never too old. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I'm tough enough. I, I would say I probably, my wife would probably, yeah. Well, I could always apply for a job because I, I could then represent the British or English community. So that would be part of the diversity. So no, I'm sorry. You could. I, I think, um, you know, talking about the school resource officers and those relationships, I think that maybe that's, you know, some, an avenue to pursue, maybe, mm -hmm. of, um, you know, developing more of those kinds of relationships that um, even, even just like a, a big brother, big sister kind of, uh, kind of model. Yeah. Um, so. You know, and the thing about diversity, like we have a, a officer, a Officer Lamb, he is married to a Japanese woman and they lived in Japan for years and he speaks fluent Japanese. And so um, we, before COVID, had um, tour groups of um, Japanese kids that would come in and go through the police department. And we, this, I wish I had it on video to show you guys. It was one of the best moments ever. So he brings them in, they bring them into the conference room and they're gonna have questions and answers. And, and these kids, you know, they, they speak English. And so Chester stands up there and he's talking in English about this. And then they're all really wrapped. And then he'll say a word, in, he'll, he'll use one word of uh, Japanese in a sentence. And they, they go like this and they start looking at each other. And, and then uh, Chester keeps going on in English and English and English. And then he says another word and, and they, they're looking at each other. And then he just full on starts in in Japanese and the, the, they light up and laugh and it's, it's amazing. So, you know, there is diversity there. He is completely, a, he's a Caucasian, but he speaks fluent Japanese and he's helped out on so many calls, you know, so. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, Frosty, one, I saw your hand. Oh, sorry. I, I just have one last um, cosmetic thing, going back to the new safety center. Any um, date for completion of the plaza on the corner i know that it was behind schedule because of the gas station mitigation and all of that but uh, november mid-november is what i'm hearing i'm hoping okay. they're working on it every day i look out my window and they are working on it so <laughs> yeah thank you uh-huh okay frosty you had your hand up well, the Stewart family, uh, Debbie and Dave, I uh, pretty much uh, covered everything that I was going to say. Uh, I just hope that we continue with the resource officers. As Debbie alluded to, uh, that is a potential really good recruiting tool. And if we can get our schools to, and the school board and the politicians to stop demonizing uh, those that do, I should say, not everybody. And, and specific to Dave's question, uh, Unfortunately, perception for some people are real, is their reality. And I've looked at the statistics and the number of police shooting minorities is so low compared to the number of officers that are getting killed. And I think that maybe some public relations efforts would help. And I'm pretty sure you're working on that as well. And what you're doing is the outreach and community policing that I would incorporate that into what Debbie was talking about, about um, school resource officers. And I, I know from having been in the, uh, uh, the academy, uh, a lot of your officers have done coffee, uh, sit downs with folks. And, and I think that helps too. And there are a number of people I know for a fact that want to get out of policing and it's got to, that's got to change. Otherwise, and the, and the sad part is many of the minority uh, communities are the ones that suffer the worst. Hmm. They can't hire private uh, private security people no. um, and look at South Chicago and other places like that. It's just sad. Yeah. And, um, so I think, I think our NACs can help and so be CCI and, and the community, but don't let your community resource officer, uh, school resource officers go away because I've, you know, they pulled them out of Portland and that's just asking for trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I'll try my best. <laughs> okay. I don't know what they're going to decide. Uh, are there, let are us there any help? Yes. Okay. Are there any other questions? Yes, Diana. 
Um, just a comment. Um, the school board meeting that uh, the chief spoke of hasn't actually been publicized yet on the district oh. um, page. It was just decided with her and, and a couple of others earlier in the week. So when that does come up, the Thursday previous to the meeting, and I can't think of what date, I think that's the 12th of November, is when the public comments will be available through the Beaverton School District page. And there is community comments that, um, giving all your great ideas as to how they can be mentors and things of that nature would definitely benefit for the school board to actually mm -hmm. see more than negative. Am I going to get a phone call from Mr. Grotting? <laughs> no, you will not. <laughs> Yikes. By the way, Chief. Uh, you tell me it was a secret. <laughs> it's not a secret. It's just, um, um, uh, for those of you that don't know, I actually work for Beaverton School District, and I'm the one that will be posting that information. Okay. <laughs> and it just hasn't gone public as of yet. We have a okay. agenda meeting as of yet. By the, way, by the way, Chief, being retired Army, have you looked at the uh, MPs that are coming out off of active duty or, or retiring? Yes, in fact, um, we were going to go up to uh, Lewis McCord because that is a, uh, my understanding, I'm not military, but that's a big, huge, um, when they release them or out process them and that, you wanna talk about a rich environment for diversity. And then um, we didn't end up going COVID it. And they're very good too. I, I, yeah. Well, um, counter opinion, Frosty, I think a lot of people who come from a military environment are not necessarily the place people we want in our homes, in our schools. I think there are a lot of people who are military who I would not want in my home. Sorry, my dad was a vet. He suffered in, uh, through World War II. But I would say I'm, I wouldn't necessarily think that's a great idea. In fact, I was thinking about a lot of the recruiting that happens you know, in the police departments, that's, that's common. You know, you send people to police academy, there's a certain a mindset that comes out of the police academy that is not necessarily conducive to, um, you know, dealing with a lot of mental health issues, which I think I've heard some statistics that 50% of the calls tend to be mental health issues. And so mm -hmm. do you want to take an MP who, right, has a certain mindset about these things, or do you want to have somebody who has a training in social work and mental I urge health? You not, I urge you not to paint with a broad stroke. Uh, I've been there, seen the training, and have worked with them, and they are incredibly compassionate. Well, compassion's great. No, you, reputation's also important. Well, rep, again, perception is is your reality, but uh, we have a different. Yes, sir, and it's the reality of the people who are uh, uh, suffering right now. I've lived. I've lived, I've lived in it. Yet, so. right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Well, I had one. Um, okay. I, I don't know that I can raise my hand here, but I'll raise it here. Okay. So um, one of the things that I was interested in, we really appreciate you, the police force that comes to the meetings every week. Um, obviously, we'd like to have a lot more people here so they could get to hear some of the things that have come back. But I was just saying that with all this focus on neighborhood policing type things, um, obviously, we have a whole bunch of NACs within the Beaverton area. So if there is a particular program that you wanted to work through the NACs where we could have a special event. Um, hopefully if this COVID thing ever goes away that we will be having a summer fair again um, in our NAC. Yeah. And I know that we've had the police come and they bring their police cars and everything else. So it was a great opportunity, especially when we had the police video um, where someone dressed up as a bunny and, and came around. It was yeah. is a great way to introducing the police. So. Yeah. It, is there anything particular that you could see that you would like to get the NACs involved in as a resource to actually extend the influence of the police force in, in the Beaverton area? You know, I like the idea of, you know, and now it's, of course, we have COVID, now it's going to be winter and rainy, but just, you know, maybe we can bring back the, the uh, or, or arrange with you guys to one of these monthly meetings. Um, we, we can come to the meeting a group of us or it doesn't even have to be at the meeting we can arrange a you know a night after work and we can bring a barbecue and have some hot dogs and just sit around and talk and have a good time doesn't have to be a big function doesn't have to be you know um it can be an impromptu kind of thing like you know we plan it a month away from now and just say hey uh, an axe or we're going to cook some hot dogs and and just for a neighborhood thing and 
and everybody comes and chats and maybe has a hot dog and, and nothing, nothing, or I think it's the little things that make the biggest difference. It's the right. smaller groups, honestly, that, that we get to know each other better. So let me think on that. Um, I'm trying to think of creative ways during COVID to do that. Okay. Because I, I was thinking the other thing would be having like a recruiting fair in the neighborhood and saying, it, here's people could come and explain the different branches of the police force and the things that they're looking for. And again, with the diversity in Beaverton, I, I've been told there's something like, uh, Miles, you can correct me on this. There's something like 190 different languages spoken in Beaverton. Uh -huh. So that would be a great opportunity if we could get all of the NACs to sign up in some way, you could definitely have a, a greater influence in the Beaverton area. So just keep that as a thought. I will. Okay. Start, I, start up the police academies again when we can. Yes. Yeah. So actually, um, we are working on our vir virtual community academy. And so more to follow on that. It's going to be scaled down. But um, we realized, um, you know, how important those community academies are. And, and we're losing a lot by not having them. So we're, we're just, like you said, thinking outside the box. Great and, idea. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Again, uh, Chief Groshaw, I thank you very much for giving of your time again. Is there any other last questions before I, we, we close this, this section? Okay, well, again, I, I thanks again for your service. Uh, thanks again with, for your service and thanks diversity. for upgrading your, your Wi-Fi. Thanks very much. <laughs> working with <laughs> diversity, and I know it's not until you know, next year, but um, coordinating with the, the night market. Yeah. Um, you know, those, those populations, but also, you know, just an opportunity to be interacting with the public at an event like that, so. And also for the schools, um, uh, I forgot to mention this, uh, I reached out to uh, Mr. McCreary, um, and he is their diversity, equity, uh, inclusion, um, I think director, uh, his title, um, and so for the schools. And so next, I think it's next week or the week after, uh, about three or four of us are meeting him, actually physically meeting him, social distancing, of course, um, have coffee and see how we can even further, um, you know, develop those relationships through the school through his eyes. Okay. Again, thank you very much, Chief Kroshaw. I thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. If you guys have any questions and you think of later and go, oh, I forgot to ask her, email Miles and I'll, I'll, I'll get right to you. Okay, and if you ever want to come back because you have something special to announce, let us know and uh, we're more than happy to be part of supporting it. I do have something. Actually, you know how everybody likes our canines, right? Oh, yes. We, we wanted them to come to our summer fair this year. So. We have a new baby in the house. Oh, really? <laughs> Roscoe. Roscoe's 18 months old. He uh, came from, where did he came from? I think the Czech Slovakia. He flew over from Slo Slovakia to a, um, I guess, dog, a, a, a shelter, not a shelter, where, where we go to buy dogs. And he was here for two days and the guys went down and um, the other handlers went down and picked him up. So we have a, we have a baby now to train. Oh, wonderful. Roscoe. So hopefully you guys get to meet him soon. He's pretty darn cute. I call him cute. I'm not allowed to say cute when I'm at work with him, so. All right, uh, again, okay. thank you very much. Okay, thank you, bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, bye-bye. Okay, so we now get ready for the boring stuff. Well, oh, I hope not, we're hoping we make it exciting. We've, we've got some um, a proposal that I've been working, or I, I sent out to the other board members um, that we're looking to make some changes to um, some of the bylaws. Uh, there's some elements in the bylaws that are restricting from a time perspective. Um, they are listing um, the officers can only be uh, hold a position for three consecutive years, which then becomes very limited just as we get to a position where uh, people are becoming effective in the job. And then we're asking them to stand down and someone has to take over. And sometimes that's not always easily filled. So one of the things that we were looking to do in uh, our particular NAC um, was to re remove the three consecutive years restriction um, on the board members. So I've sent it out to all the board members. Um, Frosty, uh, sorry, Miles, can you present the email or shall I share it from mine? I can do it if you give me just a minute to pull it okay. back up. Okay, thank you. 
Um, so the reason for this is that there are, there are two of us at least on this particular NAC that will have to stand down from our current positions. And not that I don't mind giving up something because life seems to be extremely busy with no matter what we're doing. It would be really good to be able to continue on uh, for another year seeing we've missed this year's worth of, of presentations. So what I would like to do is um, cover the, the details once uh, Miles brings it up um, from the proposal, show what it is, uh, what the Highland bylaw says, and then combine those two so that we can vote. And we have two areas. Um, one is the duties of the board members. It restricts board members from being board members for more than 10 years. So any of us have been here any longer, that will be quite difficult because you got to give up something that you're getting uh, adding value to. And then the second piece is the board members not serving more than three consecutive years. So they're the two areas that we're looking to change. And okay, I have my, it here. Okay. I think I'm ready. Um, okay. Are you guys seeing that? Yes. Okay. So if you go to the first one is section one. Uh, sorry, article four, section one. Okay. Um, this one is section A. In section A, it actually states in here that no board member may serve more than 10 consecutive terms. Um, and this was applied in October 96. So it's a long time ago. That's longer than I've been in America. So um, one of the things that has been suggested here is we'd like to strike that sentence completely so that it gives us the ability that we can continue to be board members as each year we have to be voted back onto the board. Um, it means that we can, people can cycle in and cycle out as, as they need to or want to. Um, so the idea here will be just allowing people to continue to serve beyond the 10 years. Okay, do I have anyone that, um, again, I don't want to drag this out longer than it needs to be. Uh, is there any discussion on this that anyone would like to have? So we're looking to just change section uh, in section A in article four and strike the whole sentence that says no board member may serve more than 10 consecutive terms and just take that out. I so and move. your reason for changing it is because now you, you can think have that's the discussion. completely impractical or do you think, I mean, that no one in their right mind would do this? I mean, I don't understand. I mean, I understand the purpose of your conversation was uh, extend the three year term limiting, but this, I don't understand why we would strike it. I mean, it's like, not that I, think anyone in their right mind would serve more than 10 years, but is there some reason, rationale for, do, for striking it? The, the only reason we added this one was because it's the only two elements in our bylaws that have any time terms. And I was looking at the fact that if we are addressing it today, um, we might as well take this one out if it is acceptable to everyone. If it's not, we, we can uh, just leave it there. It's just that I, I have don't no objection, uh, sir. I, I I really have no objection whatsoever, other than the fact that your purpose for the you know conversation is to eliminate the three-year term limiting. I don't. I, I I did not hear the term that that the purpose was to eliminate all time frames. I no, I, I have no other than that. That's the only reason. I mean, I'm okay. I'm happy to go with the majority. Okay. Thank you, Richard. You had your hand. I so move. Now you can have a discussion. Okay. Thank, thank you. I, I am I, not as I, good on the vote. I, I think it's interesting that it's in there when, when, when was the last time, I mean, other than three years, right? When was the last time an officer served beyond the three years? The, and, and why was it 10? Like, was there an issue with people not. Never moving on. Yeah. I mean, it, you're still part of, you're still a member of the, the South Beaverton NAC, right? But you're just not on the board in any given board position. It also, you know, like you were saying, Mike, 
just just getting your getting your legs under you in one particular position um and if you and if you're in that particular position for three years but then you step down from being the the chair but you want to continue in some other capacity secretary treasurer whatever um you know, if, if, if you're serving a three-year term in each position, that could add up, but, um, right. but it does say, you know, consecutive terms. It doesn't say in a, in a specific position. So th this, this one is related to board members. So right, uh, we right. have, we currently have nine board members, not all of them are officers, but what it's saying is that if you were serving on here for, uh, nine years, and then you got to a position where, hey, I think I could be the chair or vice chair or something. You could only serve one year because this right. rule would supersede it. And you say, okay, you've done one year as an officer, and now you've got to, because this one says that you can't. So someone who's been around a long time could find themselves in a position that, you know, they, they can't hold an, a position longer because of this particular rule. So I I perceive this one as being superfluous. So, but David, the reason why I was trying to add this one is I could see reasons where this could interfere with the ability to be able to run the NAC in a way that um, was supportive of people that have been around a long time. Now, I've been in Beaverton 22 years. So I know that we started probably six, seven years ago to attend the meetings. And then we stopped for a couple of years and then we came back. So we haven't served 10 consecutive terms. But I could see it being an issue. But anyway, that, that was why um, I raised this one up. And I didn't want to spend too much time on this one because I do want to get to the, to the second one. Right. So I agree it's super, super fluid. So do I have anyone to, and again, Richard, help me with the rules here. Um, <laughs> do I have someone to propose this, that we will remove this sentence out of our bylaws? I so move. Okay. I second. Uh, thank you. Um, and our bylaws state at the moment, so those that are here that are not board members, please don't think we're discarding you. We currently have, um, Crystal, I think you've joined as well. Um, so we, we have seven of our nine board members on here. So we need two thirds um, saying yes uh, for us to be able to m move forward on this, this change. So the, what I'm going to do is ask just for a, um, I'll go through and if you can say yay or nay, um, and that way we can then uh, move forward to the next piece. So uh, Frosty, you're first on my list. Yay or nay? Yay. Gary, yay or nay? Yay. Richard, yay or nay? Aye. Heidi, yay or nay? You're muted. Yay. Thank you. Deborah, yay or nay? Yay. Uh, Crystal, I, you're not on video, but I, I saw you were on earlier. Yay or nay? Miles, can you see if she's still on because I've lost my connection ones? I don't no. see her still on. Yeah, I don't, don't see her either. Okay. I, I have Janice here. She's been listening upstairs, so she's come down. Yay or nay? Janice says yay. Do you need to see her, Miles, or are you happy that she's here? I can pass I'm the very mic happy to her. That she's here. Yeah. Uh, pardon? I'm very happy she's here. Yes. So she said yeah, and so do I. So that that will pass. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of the nine. Okay. So that one passed. So let's move on to the next one. And I don't know what section that is because I pulled the sections out. Section five. Okay. So this is the one uh, that we were looking at. The, uh, the board shall elect a chairperson, vice chair, treasurer and recorder. And we also have a knack and the um, alternative. Um, and it goes on to say, any, any officer may be reelected to the same office for three consecutive years only. You know, so that, that is the piece that we're looking to take out. Um, what I'd sent out to the um, other board members was that if we look at the Highland bylaws, 
what they do is they, they have a term in there that says without limitation on the number of terms he or she may serve. So what we're looking to do is just adopt that sentence into our proposal. So let's open up the floor to discussions. Do I hear anyone um, to open it up for discussions? Uh, technically, you have to have a motion before right. you have the discussion. Thank you so much. <laughs> Can I, do I have a motion uh, that we that we discuss this? Correct. You have to have a motion, motion to discuss on and the discuss. change. No, oh. you have to have a, I move uh, that we discuss the wording in our bylaws. Oh, okay. So the first one is to actually take the action. Okay. Yeah. So do I have someone? Thank you. I knew I was going to fall over on this, so I. Do I do I have a motion uh, to take an action on to, to remove one sentence and put to in remove the other one sentence. sentence and to put in another? Yes. Richard, was that you? Yes. Okay. Do I have a seconder? <laughs> Second. Second. Okay, Gary oh, and, and Heidi. Thank you. Okay. Open to discussion then. So. Removing that one sentence uh, just by itself, uh, I like uh, it would might be uh, uh, might be a little bit confusing for somebody and that's where there isn't any mention of that. So I, I like the idea of adding that other sentence from the Highland where you clarify that it's not that you've you've removed that consecutive years, but that you actually saying in that in the specifically that there isn't any limit okay right. thank you for that comment any other comments okay is there any more discussion if there's no more discussion then i will look for someone to propose that we remove this current <coughs> current sentence that says any officer may be reelected uh, re-elected to the same office for three consecutive years that we remove that comment and that we replace it with the words without limitation on the number of terms he or she may serve. Do I have anyone to propose that? So proposed. Yeah. Okay. Is that Gary? Yes. Do I have a seconder? I second. Thank you, Deborah. Okay. I will do the same as I did before. Let's um, take it for a vote. Uh, let's do it in the reverse order. Debbie. Aye. Heidi? Uh, uh, yes. What am I supposed to say again? Uh, hi, yes. Um, <laughs> aye. The ayes have it, yes. Uh, Richard? Aye. Gary? Aye. Frosty? I'll, I'll do the British thing, aye. Thank you. And myself, yes. And Janice has gone back upstairs to listen to the one upstairs. So I, I don't know, um, but I will. Can she unmute herself? She's technically, yeah, she just shouted down the stairs. <laughs> she's technically challenged. I put her, you heard it. Oh, good. Thank you. So she said yes too. Yeah, so that was, thank you. She's trying to have a, a meeting with my son's uh, special needs group as well on another computer. So she's got mine upstairs she's listening to but she's technically challenged when it says trying to unmute something to say something. So that's why she came down the first time. I right, thank you. All right, so um, with that being passed, we will make these uh, amendments and Miles, I take it, we'll, we'll send them to you, submit them to you, and then they have to go through the legal department, uh, I believe. Yeah, so I'll just need the official minutes um, from this meeting to okay. be approved next month. Okay. And to get it started. Um, and then Miles yeah, send, wanted, Miles send it to Miles send it to me, and I'll I'll do that housekeeping thing I was telling you about before the meeting started. Okay. On a related sort of unrelated, in looking at the Highland bylaws, I did notice in the removal and vacancies paragraph um, the sentence that says the board shall strive to be equally representative of the geographic area of the NAC. Um, just since I've been involved with the South Beaverton NAC, um, my observation is that the 
maverick Sexton Mountain section of the South Beaverton neighborhood seems to be overrepresented. Well <laughs> yes, overrepresented. Yes. Isn't it weird how all the rabble rousers moved to the same neighborhood? It's like you guys got together and decided we're going to. Well, no, it, it's because we live at the top of the hill and we have a good perspective of everything. There you and go. you look down on the Wait, those of us who are outside could raise some rabble too. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just, I think, you know, given that I would agree, it's a pretty completely. huge knack geographically, right. um, comprised of a lot of, you know, houses, multifamily, you know, apartments, that sort of thing. And so, I, you know, I don't know that we need to change our bylaws to add that, but I think that as a board member, um, I would like to, you know, I, I would like to spend some effort on recruiting people. I, you know, I've tried to do it on next door in terms of, you know, hey, if you're concerned about traffic or, you know, whatever, um, right. you know, get involved in your NAC. Um, but I, but I think that we could maybe do a little bit better job of that. No, um, we, we have been doing it for the last couple of years. Janice, whenever she goes out, she's always telling people, we do put the signs all the way down. We do have Lisa that's in one of the apartment complexes down near Shoals Ferry. So we have right. been reaching out and I fully agree with you. I think we need to do a much better job of bringing more people into it. So Frosty, and there, you had were, a comment? there were several uh, candidates last night in the voters forum that mentioned um, the NACs and, you know, right working through the NACs and that, that, you know, those are your representatives, so to speak. And so um, I, I, I don't know whether we need a welcome wagon kind of thing from the city and the, the, the NAC, NAC office and, you know, to individual NACs, but um, better outreach and invitation to get involved. Otherwise, so we're going to be limited to the number of people that are in board positions. <laughs> that, that is, it'll, it'll just be musical chairs. <laughs> it's a good thing you dropped the 10 year restriction then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we thought of putting another one. Anyone over 65 can't do it either. So, yeah, that would just about disbar, well, at least some of us. So. <laughs> Mike, I really, could I really appreciate those Mike? comments. And yes. if you have any ideas for recruitment um, that you want help with, let me know. You know, I'm here to support you guys. Um, yeah. We've tried lots of different recruiting techniques. Um, and we, we do it in the summer fair as well. We've tried, we've had the, the NAC people, uh, the sitting NAC people come and we try to recruit people that way. It, it's, we, we'll continue to do it. Thank you. There, Thank you. Sorry, Mike, just one, one more thing. Um, yeah. There's an ebb and flow to neighborhoods. Um, they build up, they run really effectively with good leadership and a, a large group for five years, 10 years, and then kind of all of a sudden it dies off and we almost have to restart. Um, so like Sex the Mountain was down to one person for a couple of years and now it's a fully functioning board. So it, totally possible. Just, yeah, I appreciate right. that you want to do that. Well, thank you for your comment. Richard, you had a comment too. Yes, uh, several of us are on next door and it's, uh, divided into neighborhoods. So South Beaverton is a neighborhood and the boundaries of the next door South Beaverton exactly match, almost exactly match the South Beaverton knack. So if we were to plan and organize a uh, marketing and communication uh, strategy, we could, uh, it, 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 I wouldn't want a one-time event, but I, I would suggest a, um, you know, the, the thing that engages people is if there's an issue that affects them. And so, uh, you know, traffic or uh, traffic calming or uh, things development. that- <laughs> Development, yes, development. Yep. Uh, all, all of these things that, uh, you we parks that we talk about um, parking um, uh, with the chief uh, all all of these things that we're asking questions about and that we get information about that's of interest to the people in the uh, on uh, next door 
And so it would seem to me if we, if we had some way of um, coming up with a um, communication plan to, uh, so that the NAC could communicate with people on next door and get feedback on those issues uh, and then after, at our monthly meetings, go over those and then provide information, post uh, meeting minutes or whatever on next door, uh, we could get some interaction going back and forth and that would be a way to potentially recruit people or uh, get people to bring issues to the uh, NAC and, and uh, have a forum for them to try to uh, resolve issues that uh, come up in the neighborhoods. Yeah, I think well, that would be a good um, idea, but I think we also need some success stories too, so people can see it's just another, another forum where they voice their opinions and nothing happens, but that would be good. Frosty, sorry, I didn't mean to stop, cut you off. No, actually, uh, uh, Richard's absolutely correct. And, and if you take a look at who's on the screen right now, um, Heidi, what was the year that, and, and, and Michael, what was the year that uh, the car property exploded? Was that five, six years ago? Oh. I think it was more, because we've yeah. been yeah. here, this is our eighth year, yeah. and I think it happened when we've been here like a year, so I want to say yeah. like seven. Yeah, seven years. Yeah, uh, you that would house, be about right. You, you bought your house from Jan Linda Johnson, and, and I've, I've lived in Beaverton since 1975, and the only reason I got involved with the NAC is because Heidi came over and knocked on my door, and about tackled me and said, we need some help. And, and it was uh, Ted Forgeron who found next door and instead of going door to door, which we ended up doing, we did at first to get the petition signed. Uh, Ted got us on next door and we had, had got something like 600 signatures. Was that right, Heidi? And Gary was something like that. And we told, we gave everyone a flyer with the information yeah. for, to sign up and, for the NAC. So, and so, and then of course, gave us a lot of members. Deborah and Dave, uh, David and, Debbie and David and, and um, um, oh, the school teacher that uh, my daughter went Mason. to high school with. Um, Mason Smith. Yeah, Mason Smith. Uh, he, you know, he hasn't been on here, but again, uh, Miles is absolutely correct. It's an ebb and flow and it's, it's some of these big issues that happen. And just so you know, because uh, as you probably see, I send out the City of Beaverton weekly update and we have the largest next door population of any, um, uh, next door of the 11 next doors in the city. We're over 25, almost 2,800. And I don't, I don't, I could say homes, but they're probably like uh, maybe two people like Mike and, and Janice may have a next door account, but um, so that, that might count as two, but we still have the by far the largest and, and it's, it's sad, but it, it, if something doesn't affect you, it's hard to stay committed. And uh, the reason I've stayed committed is that we need a watchdog. Not that the city is bad, uh, but things happen. And Lisa got involved with the um, Sterling Point sign controversy. And I actually dug deep into that. And I was appalled at how that decision was made that they couldn't have the signs that they needed to direct people to their property. And the signs that they, and, and those that were on that, on our board when, Next, when Sterling Point uh, administration brought the signage company in, they were beautiful quality signs, better than they already have. And so those are kind of issues. And uh, Terry Lawler, who's on the BCCI committee with Gary and I, and by the way, Gary's your primary and I step back to be the, the secondary. Uh, we're talking about uh, with Heidi and Lisa Marie about our experiences dealing with the city planning uh, De Debbie's on that too. Sorry about that, Debbie. Uh, this isn't. This is kind of an extemporaneous thing that Terry came up with the idea about how do we how do we prepare NACs to be better prepared for development, especially with the uh, new state legislation on. I'll just call it infill for lack of a better word. And so we're talking about getting together with uh, Lanny um, uh, and developing tools that the NACs could have available on how to deal with any in development. It, this has just happened this week, by the way. And um, here, let me get rid of this. Um, and so uh, I think if we can uh, come up with some tools like that and then continue our outreach through Nextdoor, uh, not, you know, and as you probably have seen too, I post the uh, agenda uh, before the meeting, hopefully 
more than one day before. Um, I think I could probably do a little better job, maybe starting a week or bef week before, but still it requires people to commit. Yeah. And how do you get them to do that unless it, that unless there's a hurt. It's kind of like if you've been watching the uh, confirmations for uh, Elizabeth Cooney Barrett. Uh, um, hey, Frosty, I got to cut you off for a yeah. second. Yeah. Um, but it, it, unless there's a hurt, unless there's a hurt, sometimes people will get involved. Yep. Do we do have the agenda with the board nominations on there? Um, yes, I was just about to agenda. call that. Yeah, so thank, we thank you. It. It, great, great topic for another meeting, though. Yeah. And okay. We'll, and we'll bring up that deal about the planning, uh, planning uh, commission stuff too. We'll, we'll so, see. Miles, moving on to that as a matter of course, because it hasn't been sent and approved yet, um, can we nominate the people even if they should be three years out, or do we consider that now it's passed, we can renominate people that have been there more than three years? Um. Because if we can't do it this yeah. week, we can do it in November once it's approved and yeah, then think, have the voting. We can nominate people this this term and then vote for them next term once we know it's going to pass. Yeah, I think um, that's the best way to do it. Nominate people this term right, and vote next month. And we'll, we'll put it on the agenda and we'll take other nominations that same night. Okay. Um, and then also if there's people on the board who couldn't make it tonight, but they want to continue, somebody right. needs to nominate them. Yeah, and I've, I've confirmed with those that are on the board. I know the ones that, that have said they cannot or won't, and those that will. So I will raise those here today. So we, we at least know what, what's out there. And, and you can self-nominate as well. So Right. So before we do a, that, years. thank you. Before we do that, Richard, I'm going to ask you to help me with the rules again. Um, but we need, but one of our bylaws states that if we want to move the voting, uh, the annual general meeting from October, that we need to vote for it to be delayed. And we need, again, the same approval rate. So I so move. Thank you. So this, this discussion on the table, the discussion on the table is um, because of the changes to the bylaws. Oh, have a seconder. Is that Frosty? Frosty seconded. Thank you. And this is being okay. Any questions? Okay. What we're what we're proposing then um, for the uh, to vote on is moving our annual meeting from October to November, so that we can uh, get the bylaws approved. Um, and uh, to do that, we again need to go through the voting process. So I'm going to ask for each of you to vote after we have a proposer and seconder that we move the annual meeting to November. We already did. We did, okay. So we can vote now. I, I'm so yeah. pleased you're here, Richard. I just get <laughs> fired up with this. Yeah, I'm a British man. We... Call for the question. Call for the question then. Call for the question, yes. Okay. So we can now vote? Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a book on, uh, what is it Robert's Rules or something? Robert's Rules of Order. Yeah. I will read through it. So next week I will not be so, next month I will not be so bad at it. Okay, again, I'm going to start at the top. Um, Frosty, do you agree to move the annual meeting to November? Aye, matey. Thank you. Harry. Aye. Richard. Aye. Heidi. Deborah. Aye. Janice has said aye. Did you hear that? She shouted down the stairs again, and I say aye. So, okay. Uh, that is unanimous. We can move forward. We'll have the meeting next November. I'll say aye to you. Oh, who? Who was that? Crystal. Oh, we asked you earlier, and it looked like you dropped off. Sorry, I didn't see you come back on. Thank you, Crystal. So, Crystal says aye too. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is, um, and I th think, Miles, you said that we need to call for board members first. So we have to be each re-elected, and we can do this as a slate. If I get that right, I did take notes. Um, so we're looking for board members. So um, if I go through what we have, 
I'm going to ask if you want to volunteer to stay on the board because you have to be a board before you become an officer and then we'll do the officers later. So Crystal, as you're here, you're still here. Um, do you yeah. wish to remain part of the board? Not at this time because of crazy, crazy life. That, that's not as an officer, but just on the board. So you, you don't want to be part of the board. Oh, yeah, I can be part of the board. Just... Okay, that, this is just on the board. It's not looking for the officers. Okay, so Crystal, um, I'll take myself. Yes, I want to remain on the board. Janice also wants to remain on the board. Okay, coming back down. Um, Frosty, do you want to remain on the board? Yes, sir. Gary. Yes. Heidi. Yes. Richard. Yes. Uh, Lisa does. Um, she sent me an email on that. Uh, Deborah. Yes. Okay. Is there anyone else that is on the call that is not currently on the board? Uh, Diane, you're here. I don't know if you want to become part of the board. I'm not forcing anyone. I'm just asking that question. Um, I honestly have no idea all of the time commitment or anything of that nature. So, well, we, we party every other week. We have pizza parties. <laughs> um, so apart from attending these meetings for the board members, um, and then when we do our summer fair, that is, that's currently the only time uh, commitment that we've made. Um, the summer can get very, very busy when we're doing work with the schools. Um, and getting everything set up for the summer fair, but the rest of the time is just coming to each of the meetings. Uh, that's the only other time committee. And I'm not forcing you anyway. Uh, if you want to, um, let us know at some other time. Um, I saw, Debbie, did your, did the other steward, do you know he's dropped off? So I didn't yeah. know if he wanted to be part of the board. He, he did not express an interest. But okay. I'll, I'll, t I'll, I'll recruit him. Um, <laughs> Just so you know, we can have up to 20 board members. Yes. So if, if he is interested, uh, I need to know whether he wants to be added to the list. And, and okay. with, oh. that, if, with that, we, we do need a quorum. So Diana, uh, if you can't make the meetings, obviously uh, we'd love to have you there and be a board member, but it, we, we've got to make sure we have a quorum too, so we can conduct business. Right. So. And the, same yeah, with, and the same with Crystal too. So uh, if, if you have, uh, and it doesn't mean you can't be on the board next year, uh, as they say, because we've had people who drop off and come back on. It's just important to make sure we have those people that commit to be on the board, make as many meetings as possible. And in the bylaws, it says, if you don't make three meetings in a row, you can be voted off. But I would rather not do that, but just say, I need to take a sabbatical or something because we all understand. No, and I, I completely understand that. Um, uh, I, I think I mentioned it in my, my first meeting last month. Um, I had been on my um, union board with the school district since 2008, and um, this is the first time I haven't. So I'm, I'm just going to continue to take... You're enjoying your holiday. I am enjoying my holiday since I started okay. a different job at the school district. Yes, yes. Okay. So... So, Debbie, did you want to include him or not? Did you uh, want to know? I would, I would say not right now. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll talk to him about it and then nominate him in November. If he, okay. he, he has to bring his bottle of wine, though, so we can share that. <laughs> so, um, in talking with Miles, Miles said that we can, instead of having to go through and vote on each one, we can vote on a slab. Um, so if everyone is comfortable, the recommendations for the board is Crystal, Michael, Janice, Frosty, Gary, Heidi, Lisa, and Deborah. Michael, Michael, Michael it would be a slate, not a slab. A slate, yes. And I'm missing Richard. Sorry, Richard's on here. I, for some reason, I didn't write him down. Okay. Um, is there any objections to any one of the people that I listed? 
Okay, so I'll come down and ask then for a, for a vote from each of you. Uh, Crystal, are you happy with the slate? What's the slate? The slate is all the people that we listed. Sorry, we've the people that we've said would come onto the board would be Crystal, Michael, Janice, Frosty, Gary, Heidi, Lisa, Deborah, and Richard. So if you're happy with all of those, if you want to approve the slate, which is all of those together, rather than voting individually for each one, uh, you can say aye, or if not, you just say nay. Yes, of course. Okay. I say yes. Uh, Janice, she'll shut down the stairs in a minute. We'll say yes. Frosty? Yes. Gary? Yes. Heidi? Yes. I take it that was a yes. It was a broken yes. Yes. Oh, thank you. Um, Lisa is not here, but she said that she wanted to. Um, so I'm not going to count her vote because she can't vote. She didn't tell me. Deborah? Yes. Richard? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So that, that is the board members. Now we need to look for those that wish to either nominate themselves or nominate someone to be um, one of the six people or the five people that we're looking for. So up for voting, we need a chair, a vice chair, a recorder, a treasurer, a BCCI rep, and an alternative. And it can be the same as we've had in the past, uh, if they so wish. So does anyone want to start the nominations? Except Crystal said she's stepping down from vice chair. Yes, so Crystal oh. said that she will not be vice chair. So we will be looking. So. Um, let me, let me start at the top and move down then. So uh, does anyone else want to be considered for the chair for the South Beaverton NAC? I nominate Michael. Okay, I have been nominated and I accept that nomination. Is there anyone else who would like to become the chair? Okay, uh, I will put my name down then for the nomination for the chair. Um, we do need a vice chair. Crystal has said that because of her busy schedule, she's not going to be able to continue as a, a vice chair. Is that? I nominate Debbie. Debbie, you have been nominated as vice chair. Would you accept that nomination? Um, I'm going to decline since I have uh, re-upped my application as an at-large BCCI member. So. Okay. I remember last year, Lisa, what sounded interested. Yes, that's right, Chris. And she said that she would consider another position if someone wanted to take on the recorder. She said she will continue being the recorder um, if nobody else wanted it, but we can't hold two offices, so. And I'm sorry I've run out of time. I should have been more attentive. Let's, let's see if we can finish this. So. Anyone nominated vice chair? If we don't have one this time, we will do it in November. We'll nominate someone in November. No, I nominate Richard then. Richard, are you, you have been nominated for vice chair. Are you interested in uh, taking on that nomination? And you're a mute. Well, I'm, I, sure. I'd be well, honored you, if you did. Yes, you would be, you are happy? Okay, all right, Richard has been nominated as vice chair. Um, recorder. Lisa, Anyone? Lisa Marie then, I nominate. Lisa has said that she would. Um, I will also talk to her about the vice chair position because I don't want her to, to miss out on that. So I'll put Lisa down for the recorder. Treasurer. Heidi. I would, I would like to nominate Heidi if she's happy to keep it on. We'll buy you a new my, unmute My button. space bar isn't unmuting it for some reason. Uh, yes, I accept the nomination. Yeah, I have to twist okay. your arm, do I? Thank you. <laughs> I thought maybe you were For the fourth year in a row, Frosty. Using a walkie-talkie where you have to hold the button down while you talk. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> okay, uh, BCCI member. Um, I nominate Gary. Yeah. 
if Gary will continue to be our BCC rep. Great, great job. Especially Thanks, because he's been in planning before for Clackamas County. It's going to be a big issue this year. Yes, except. Thank you. Thank you for your kind comments. Um, alternative BCCI rep. Frosty. I nominate Frosty. Yes. If anybody else wants it, I'd be more than happy. I second the Frosty nomination. Okay, so you can't get out of that now. Frosty, you nominated one. She's getting her own back. So. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. You know how I feel about overrunning on time. I apologize. We are seven minutes later than we plan to be. Is there any other business before we close? We have one other thing, and that is our financial report. But is there any other business? Yeah, just real quick. Uh, we have very, very good representation on BCCI with Debbie and uh, Gary as well. Okay. And Eric Schmidt is also a yeah. Eric Schmidt. Schmidt. Yeah, he's on our. Yeah, he's not on our NAC, but he's in our neighborhood. Okay. If there's no other comments, then what I'd like to do is just ask a financial update, Heidi. Uh, yeah, I'll make it super fast since we're over time. Uh, nothing has changed since last month. Our bank balance is $7,249.22. Okay. Miles, how do we stack up with uh, the other NACs with our balance? <laughs> Uh, you're up there for sure. Okay. Yeah, Highland's got a pretty robust one too, but. Fiscally responsible. Yeah. Oh, oh just the fact We haven't had anything to spend money on. <laughs> uh, it's well, just like we, and we've done stuff too, so. That, yeah. Okay, I would like to call an adjournment to the meeting. Thank you very much for bearing with us. I moved to adjourn. Oh. Um, Is that I Janice? Have I, Janice has just unmuted me um, to say that um, we would like people to consider our postal lady. Um, we're not sure what to do, but if anyone knows the postal lady, I think her name is Amber. Amber. Amber, yes. Um, she's she's not been... my postal lady. I don't live in that neighborhood. <laughs> oh, well, you need to move into this neighborhood. We've got some houses coming up for sale, and I'm pretty sure Crystal can set you up with them very nicely. Or Vicky. Oh, Crystal. No, come on. Gosh. All right. Anyway, um, the reason why I want to suggest something, if you can be thinking, she is going around the neighborhood and leaving stones in people's lockers that are painted a color. And, we call and, them mailboxes. Sorry? <laughs> we call them mailboxes. Mom. All right. Lockers? Mailboxes. And, and to, be, <laughs> to be equal, female boxes too, because we can't just have mailboxes, you know. Otherwise, it's sexist. It's okay. spelled differently in America. It's M-A-I-L. Yeah, we, we spell it any way we want to because we wrote the language. Um, <laughs> and we correct Anyway, uh, what, what she's been doing is she's been trying to have inclusion in the neighborhood by putting these stones in the, bo in, in the box. And if you put something back, she's actually trying to do this for like trick-or-treat because we have distance trick-or-treating. So she's leaving things in the post box where she knows there are children in that postal address. So I thought she was hiding them in the neighborhood, and when they when the kids find it, they're supposed to put it in their mailbox, and then she okay. gets treat. She's she's doing multiples, and that's probably true too. I I don't know. Janice passes on to me, and I don't know all the details. But I just thought it would be nice if we can be considering something in November that we can talk about. Is there something we can do for her? She's really is doing a great job in the neighborhood and she she'll often do go out of her way to help with the post so yeah. i just wanted to to end on that particular note again yeah, well, I she's great and i like i like her next door posts where where she talks what where she talks about that and then she also was talk, talking about when we were going to receive our ballots and you know right. all of that kind of thing so i think she's, she's very informative and she's good yeah, she's been a very important part. Maybe we can recruit her into the NAC. We're allowed people that are outside of our NAC, only 25%. So we could always invite her in. Anyway, I do want to thank you. Uh, you know how I hate going over, but thank you very much for your 11 minutes that you graciously gave. Uh, thank you, John, for coming. Thank you, Diane, for, for coming and joining us. Thank you, Miles, for hosting it and for doing all the busyness. Uh, thank you, Richard, for keeping my rules straight. And I will get the book and read it just to make sure I can do it on my own next week. Okay.
next time. So we will vote on our, on our um, chair members next week. We have a list. I will talk to Lisa and confirm which way she wanted to go on that. Um, and I will see you in a week. And Frosty, I take your comment very kindly. I have been trying to be a week and a half ahead of time um, on my agendas. And for some reason, I get overwhelmed right at the last minute. And then I end up sending it out late. I will do a better job of getting them out at least a week earlier. Again, thank you very much. All have a great evening. Thank you very much for your time.